Hey, good Tuesday morning. It is June 10th. I'm Michael Clark here with BAM Weather, and we're going to talk about the latest pattern here coming up over the next couple of weeks. You know, I've had a lot of folks um, reach out and say, hey, where's the drought? You guys have talked about a drier pattern coming, hotter pattern coming, and we have. 100% correct with that, and there was indications, a lot of indications really with that, that we thought um, were pretty obvious. And what we've seen in, in just overall persistence in the pattern, especially a feature here up near the Hudson Bay, a big main uh, area of low pressure that's driving this weather pattern, um, it's, it's, it's proven to not show up yet. All right, so while we've had a, uh, our fair share of weather challenges, and there are spots that need rain. We haven't seen this overall overarching hot and dry pattern. And uh, I'm going to talk about what we think going forward and some of our adjusted thoughts. So as always, guys, if the video brings any value, you know, if you liked it, uh, if it made you think, uh, and, and it was good for you, subscribe to the YouTube channel, share it with a friend. We, we always greatly appreciate that as well. It's June 10th, Tuesday, just before 8 a.m. Eastern. It's a quiet radar out there. This is a look at the Clarity Platform. Despite South Central Texas and the Southeast, and of course, again, New England, uh, Northeast getting hit with rain, it's a pretty quiet day, albeit this morning. There's a nasty cluster of thunderstorms moving here across South Central Texas. They are no stranger to this. This is, this is kind of never ending. It's, in fact, it's, it's fascinating how much, um, you know, weather in general, the South Central Plains has dealt with. On clarity, you can do observed rainfall. And the last seven days is just crazy. You know, you can see the last seven day rainfall for the majority of, well, anywhere you want really, but look down here across portions of Kansas, state line of Kansas, Oklahoma, south central Oklahoma. All right, look at that there, just west of Oklahoma City, almost eight inches of rain. Look at this here, just south and east of Lubbock. Look at that, seven day rainfall totals nearing 10 inches of rain. It's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable how wet it's been. Uh, even over here across portions of Missouri, several locations here uh, over five inches. Look at this over here in west central Indiana. Seven and a half inches of rain in the last seven days. Just remarkable uh, how much rain has come down. All right. In the coming days, we do have a chance for some stronger storms down across south central or southwestern Texas. A slight risk down there. Tomorrow's outlook, there's some thunderstorm cluster potential across portions of Iowa and northern Illinois. And then the day three forecast has more of a marginal risk for some stronger storms in the central plains. Okay, uh, looking at the rainfall forecast just really over the next three days, that's the focal point right there is here across portions of northern Iowa, getting into southern Minnesota, uh, you know, bullseye down there, two inch, you know, inch and a half, two inch plus there. A lot of corn grown in here. This is a big, big corn area right here um, with, a, with an early June rain. Nobody's going to complain about that. More of the, the same down here across central Texas, though, just getting inundated with rain at over three and a half inches there. So here's a look at the agricultural soil moisture percentile, okay, the sportless index. And again, improvements nonetheless have been made. Uh, there's no doubt about it. We've seen improvements here. Um, but it's it's really what we're, what we're after uh, is, you know, getting, I'm trying to get my drawing tool to show up here is uh, um, needing a little bit more moisture here in northern Indiana, Illinois, portions of Michigan. And evidently today, the, the drawing tool isn't going to work today. And I don't know why, but I apologize. Um, it's not showing up for me. But got to love technology. So no drawing on the maps today uh, for whatever reason. <laughs> but you can see where moisture is needed and still still needed down here a little bit in the southern Canadian prairies as well. Listen, I talked about June having active severe weather. We've had plenty of it, um, especially across the South Central Plains. And this Texas has been slammed. Um, and some wind events too. Over a thousand wind events. In fact, we're trending to be uh, year to date the, the second most active uh, annual counts of, of wind storm reports, uh, trailing behind 2011. Okay, so it's just been very, very active. Um, 8,100 through the 8th of June. There's no, no shortage of wind reports. Uh, the next several days with these systems as well, we'll, we'll have the, the potential to continue to run risks for excessive rainfall in southwest Texas, south central, central eastern Texas tomorrow, 
Marginal risk for excessive rainfall tomorrow across North Iowa. Slight risk there, as I showed you, that day three localized two-inch plus report rain up there uh, in southern Minnesota. You can see the rain still ongoing in Oklahoma, Texas, day three. Day four, it's still there. It's a, it's a quasi-stationary boundary just parked down there, bringing the rain with it. Eventually, it shifts east by day five. So we kind of highlighted that in our morning, uh, and I'm, I'm sitting on my couch here this morning, uh, giving you a video update, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust myself here real quick uh, and kind of get a little bit more comfortable. But we kind of gave you this, uh, told you about the ag weather reports uh, you know, a while back, uh, how they can be sent to your email. And you can access these and, and get these uh, you know, early in the morning so you can kind of see uh, what it is that we're dealing with. Uh, and, and this is, this is a, a good overarching view. We'll keep it here. Week one, departure from normal temperatures. And week two uh, on the left. Okay, you can see warmer suggestions coming. Nothing excessively warm, but when you're warmer than normal mid-June, you're going to have some upper 80s, low 90 degree high temperatures, maybe some warmer evenings. But you can see the rainfall pattern here. You can see the rain coming here across portions of um, South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, northern Iowa, Michigan. Those are going to be storm, that storm cluster threat there here coming up. Uh, and then more heavy rain this weekend. And this is a big deal because uh, here this weekend, uh, across the Ohio Valley, yet again, more rain, possibly locally heavier amounts of rain uh, coming here. All right, in, in areas that are already flooded. I have standing water and I, I live corn, corn and beans surround me out here in central Indiana. And uh, we don't need the rain. There's no question about it. Week two, we continue to see the above normal pattern here with that northwest flow indication there. Okay. We'll come down here again. We always give you the model trend analysis. I want to come down. I've already gone over all this with you, uh, but here's the here's the precip data. Okay, and again, you can see the European top left, which is our favored forecast for the week right now. Uh, GFS bottom left, and the Canadian top right. You can see the European, Canadian, and the UK met for for what it's worth. Very very active, especially from the uh, southern plains into the Ohio Valley in the Mid Atlantic as well okay precipitation data in daily chunks or in uh, five day chunks here's the the six to ten the 11 to 15 all three modes of you know, all three versions of the data showing continuing to show an active pattern and it's going to be one of those that features this northwest flow okay and it's it's going to be you know this coming from the north and west and, and bringing storm cluster risks in and i'm going to talk more about that in just a second but you can see the overnight changes. Uh, week two, we favored the EPS, particularly overnight. The GEFS, a little bit too dry, we think. But you can see the wetter forecast trends, both in week one and week two, versus its prior run. So we're continuing to see the wetness there. Here's temperature breakdowns in five-day chunks. One to five, it's cooler. Six to ten, we see a milder pattern. Again, not excessively hot right now. But a milder pattern evolves warm, for sure, in the 6 to 10 and the 11 to 15. Okay. What I want to show you here, this is the, uh, this is the European model, multi-panel plot here. Um, and this multi-panel plot uh, shows us a couple things. I'm going to try and shrink this up so you guys can see what I'm saying here. Uh, but I want you to note the, the periphery here. Uh, watch what I'm, what I'm kind of showing you here. We'll go to the drawing tool. I can draw on this one. You want to watch along and north of here. This is your dew your I'm sorry, your cape, your convective available potential energy. This is your dew point temperatures, how they're in the 70s. And then you see this here. This is that boundary. Okay, you've got south southerly flow here, and then you've got your flow across the top here. And this is a convergence in winds and where we have a quasi-stationary boundary. And so that's where you're going to get the multiple uh, daily threats of heavy rain across northern Iowa and Minnesota. But the thing about this pattern is, is it shows up again. Okay. And I'm going to show you that here real quick. We'll turn that off. We see that here throughout the weekend. Multiple bouts of rain, no question about it. But watch what happens in the extended forecast when the heat shows up a little bit. We're going to go right. We'll start right. Uh, I'll start right here. Okay. Here's the first indication. June 21st. Again, note the the instability gradient right through here. Okay, note the dew point, the pooling of the dew points in the mid 70s. 
you get these thunderstorm clusters that want to develop. So they're going to bring rain. The flow pattern is going to suggest they're going to come from the northwest and offer up the chance for strong storms, right? They can be, they can be severe at times, all right? And then they continue. Watch this. More suggestions of it right there. See that? That's a classic look there. You've got this instability gradient riding from north to south with, with plenty of sufficient moisture and the Europeans seeing the, the threat here. Okay, so we're going to get into a pattern conducive of multiple rounds of thunderstorms in the week two period uh, from the northwest flow. That thinking really hasn't changed. All right, so what I'll do is I'll show you the, uh, the rainfall forecast, at least from the European model, as it pertains to the next couple of weeks. Okay, and again, uh, you're going to have a couple areas of focus here. What you're going to have is um, your your, your quasi-stationary boundary is going to bring a lot of rain here initially because look you see here week one which basically week one okay and then you add in week two and you can see what happens it adds to the totals um, and again uh, it's one of those patterns where there can this gap you're seeing here this this actually can be possible because if there's any upper level ridging the flow is going to be around that and kind of this way you know so you can have voids in precipitation totals. That's the European model out through 10, uh, 15 days. And here's the GFS. It, it's, it's, it's more active. Um, that's the 0Z. Go to the 61. Okay. Um, but nonetheless, these, these, both of these models are showing the flow pattern that would suggest storm clusters are going to be at risk. So real quick, let's talk about the long-term forecast. A lot of you have asked about the long-term forecast and where's the heat, where's the drought, where's the dry. Um, and again, listen, that, that has failed to materialize. And the reason being a lot of that is because we need to see a, a feature exit that has been around for a while now. And it's this Hudson Bay vortex or this rid, or the trough, if you will. Even out to day 15, you're still seeing suggestions of it with the ridge here in the east, trough in the Pacific Northwest, and the ridging along the, in, the, uh, in Alaska. We looked at years where this was a permanent feature in June, okay? And we rolled them forward into July. And these are the years we've had. Most recent, 24, 21, 15, 10, and 05. Going back to 2000, though, we have 04, 03, 02, and 2000. And we looked at the patterns and what that permanent feature seems to produce for the month of July. Well, temperatures on the left, okay, cooler than normal temperatures, the heat being focused in the northwestern third or even the Pacific Northwest in July, and precipitation focal points very similar to where they've been, very similar to where they've been overall, with a focus in central and eastern U.S. for above normal precipitation to continue. So this would be the July pattern based on this look, okay. When we look at the European weekly, there's support for this. Okay, the last two weeks of June on the left, you can see the precipitation remaining active, kind of suggesting that flow pattern, allowing the precip to be above normal. Okay. And then you look here, you see the warmth. Watch this, watch the shift into, into the first 14 days of July. Watch it shift west a little bit, but in more northwest versus this uh, period here, but keeping it cooler east and wetter east okay is there potential for for precipitation to go dry in in july or drier here yeah there's still the potential in the central plains that precip goes below normal but right now that hasn't been the the, the, the thought process or the, the theme yet the trend hasn't we haven't seen that materialize if you will that's kind of the general pattern shift there looking at the the probability forecast from the multi-model ensemble that just came out a few days ago Again, very similar. July is across the top. The focal point of above normal temperatures is in the west and northwestern portion of the country. And the focal point for above normal precip is in the eastern grain belt, mid-Atlantic, and the southeast. And it's the same for that August forecast. Let me move this so you can see August. Same thing, really. All right. Yes, there are indications of drier risks in the central and northwestern U.S., but keeping it wet here in the eastern portion of the country uh, here for August. So with all of that said, now this is a look here at the uh, the updated analog forecast. All right, I'm going to zoom this out here. 
and uh, looks like we got somebody waking up this morning. Uh, but I'll zoom this out here, and you can see the the the, tr the yield forecast suggestion. And here's what I want to take the takeaway from this is 04 is big above trend yield in 04. Like it was like 11 points above. Okay, and so uh, what we have here is very very teetering that line above below above below on that trend it comes out to plus 1.2 above trend these years with this hudson bay vortex and uh, or low pressure center if you want to call it um, tend to produce good crop okay a couple of them are below trend we have three below years like um, 02 um, looks like uh, 2010 and, and 2024 were below trend. But listen, if we go to our summer forecast, and th this has been out, we, we haven't, ha this has been going since since May 30th. Um, and, and you know, what you have to consider is, is we've had a, 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 below, nor a below normal, a below trend yield forecast this whole time, not because of the, the forecast pattern we're seeing right now. The, We've had a 181. The trend's 183. Now, if you get a 181, that's still the largest crop we've ever seen. We've had that. We've had that forecast for a while. I was just speaking to a large group of, of, of folks out in St. Louis talking about this. It's like, yeah, we're saying below trend, but the below trend that we're saying would still be the largest crop we've ever seen. So it's like, how do you how do you present that? Well, you just present it the way that it is. Um, it could be the best crop we ever had, but it could be below trend. Maybe USDA needs to look at their trend. If it goes above trend, I mean, you're talking unbelievable amounts of, of yield here. Um, but that's the thought process right now. I, I, if anything, this forecast verifies a little bit wetter into Minnesota and Iowa and Illinois and Wisconsin. If anything, we're a little too too dry into the east. But there are indications that this is going to trend the forecast or the, the pattern can turn drier into July and August. We're just not ready to come up off of that yet. And there's that temperature uh, forecast for summer right now. So we'll continue to keep you posted. A little bit of longer video, but wanted to give you the updated seasonal thought process. Again, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll continue to keep you posted. Have a great day, guys.